Okay, so what we'll be doing uh, during this session, uh, this one is like a six part series, uh, which I plan to do uh, before I start on to the six parts a bit of about myself. So my name is Nilesh Kule. I work as an architect in one of the insurance companies. I write my blog on handphonearchitect.com and I have the GitHub uh, repository, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, you can easily find me using uh, these social media attributes. So uh, what is this series all about? We'll be starting uh, with the AKS learning series. So I'll be using Azure Kubernetes service, which is newly launched. It was in preview for quite a long time. And last week, it went into GA. Hello? OK? OK. Uh, so this is like uh, six parts. Although it was mentioned in the meetup that we'll be using ACS, I will not be using ACS. I'll be using AKS, which is Azure Kubernetes uh, service. The first part is today, which is uh, purely Docker. We'll see how to containerize applications using Docker. Uh, very basic introduction. I will start with writing a .NET application and put it into the containers. So if you already know a bit of Docker, this would be like a kind of reputation for you. So please bear with me during this session. For the next one, we would uh, use uh, Docker Compose, which is a mechanism to stitch multiple containers together. And then we will start using uh, Kubernetes. So uh, we will use Minikube, which is a local version of Kubernetes, to test locally on a single machine. And uh, the last three parts, part four, part five, and part six, will be all on Azure. So uh, then we will deploy onto the managed cluster in part four. Part five would be about uh, debugging and monitoring. And I'll be using, again, the OMS, operational management uh, solution provided by uh, Microsoft and Azure to monitor and to debug the containers, the whole cluster. And as a bonus, we would also look at the CI CD pipeline using Docker and Kubernetes in the part six. So what the application looks like. It's a very simple .NET application. So if you were there at the Azure Bootcamp or by chance at the box days, it's the same application which I've been using for my earlier demos. It's a MVC application using .NET Core. Uh, it has a, uh, like a list of uh, talks, you can say. And you can simply create new talks in it. And it uses ASP.NET Core MVC. Uh, .NET Core has a web API backend. These two communicate to one another. And then there's SQL Server 2017 running on Linux. And all this, we would be using it inside the Docker containers. OK, so uh, without spending any time on these slides, let's see what do we need to get started. So I've created a repository on GitHub. It's, uh, I'll be using this, this repo, uh, AKS Learning Series. So you can find the code after the session here. And you can download it. You can enhance it if you want. So how do we get started when we want to uh, containerize the application? Or how do we find the? Uh, right source of information. To get Docker, you need the Docker engine. So that's what I put in the prerequisites. You need to have a local installation of Docker, either Docker for Mac or Docker for Windows. And that's like the daemon, the service which is running. And then you can have images which are pulled from Docker Hub, which is a Docker registry. Uh, we can search for images, like if you have the client running, I can go here and I can first verify that I have the right version of Docker. So this is the Docker command line. So give me what is the current version. I can also use the long syntax like version to get the current version of Docker. I can also get the Docker info. And this will give me a lot more details about uh, what is the current version of Docker installed on my system. So to search for 
images. I can use like the base images provided by someone like Microsoft, or if you're using Java, then Oracle. If you're using Go language, then from Go. So let's search for some of the Microsoft images. I can do it from command line, Docker, search. Microsoft, and if I'm looking specifically for, let's say, ASP.NET Core image, and I will get a list of all those images which are provided by Microsoft. And you can see uh, the stars that are associated with these images, whether it's official or not. So there are people creating their own images and putting it on Docker Hub. Uh, you can either use the official image or you can use the custom built image. The other option to search for images is to go on the net and you log into Docker Hub. And you can search the same image here. So, Microsoft. get the same results, whether you do a search using your uh, client or using the uh, web UI, web interface, and then you can find the details about uh, these images. So if you go on the ASP.NET Core image, you can find uh, information like when this image was published, which are the supported uh, operating systems where you can use this image, uh, what are the different tags associated with this image, you can also go to tags here to find out additional details, like uh, when was the image published, what is the size of the image. You can also find out how the image was built. So on the web, you get a lot more details as compared to that of the uh, Docker CLI on the client side. <coughs> Uh, when it comes to uh, the .NET Core, there are various versions of the images, and sometimes it's difficult to understand which one to use. So recently, there was a very nice article published by a guy. Uh, I have this in the references, so you can look at it. Here, it explains <coughs> for which purpose you need to use which kind of image. So basically, you have. Uh, .NET 2.1 runtime image, there is one with dependencies, there is ASP.NET Core uh, 2.1, which was recently released, and there is the SDK image. So the basic difference here is you use the SDK or runtime dependency images during the build time, and then when you want to deploy the code to production, you don't need all the build tools in your production version. So you <coughs> use an image which is optimized for production. So let's start with the application and uh, we'll build some of the uh, core concepts here. So again, I'll use the .NET CLI here. Uh, this works on Windows as well as Mac, so you can follow the same commands. So I can again verify like which is the version of uh, .NET I have, it's 2.1. You can also do like Docker version, the .NET version. So if I want to create, sorry, .NET version. If I want to create a new solution, I can use .NET new select command. I can use the name. So let's create a solution called AKS learning series. So this will use the default template and it will create a solution for me. This is just a solution file. I can add a project to this using .NET <coughs> new. Let's create a MVC application. So if I don't know what is the syntax, I can just say .NET new and help, and it will give me what are the options for the new command. 
So I'll start with the MVC application, the front end. So we can say .NET new MVC, and let's call this TikToks. file as 
So it starts with from. From basically tells which is the base image I am going to use for categorizing this application. So I am going to use .NET 2.1. 300 is uh, the number which is provided by Microsoft. So this image is the official image provided by Microsoft. And it is the SDK image. Because I want to build the applications, I use the version of the image which has all the build tools into it. And then I name this as a build environment. So this is like a stage. I'm naming this stage as my build stage. Then I need a new get config. So this is basically uh, the repository from where this application will pull all its dependencies. I don't have this right now. Uh, so locally what happens is there is a default new get <coughs> cache available, uh, which is uh, stored in the disk. So it's able to build. The .NET framework knows where this cache is. But within the container, it doesn't know where this cache is at. So I need to specifically create this particular file called NuGet config and need to specify where is the dependencies located. So let's put this file. All the .NET Core dependencies are at this uh, MyGet uh, package uh, repository, and the NuGet API package is located at this URL. So it's going to pull the, uh, the packages from these two repositories when I add those dependencies into my project. Then I specify what is the working directory. So let's change this to .NET. Web or Tech Talks Web. Then I do a .NET restore. So this is basically looking at my uh, CS project file. It's looking at what are the dependencies it has, and it's going to restore all those dependencies for me. So if you're coming from Java background, this is like uh, Maven uh, install. So it will get all the dependencies for you. Then I copy all the contents of this Tech Talks web directory into the container. And then I run the .NET publish command. And I do this in the release configuration. And I put the output in the folder called release output. Uh, once the uh, output is generated, then I need to put this into the runtime version of the image. So that is again provided by Microsoft. I have .NET 2.1, ASP.NET Core, runtime version. So this does not contain any build tools. It is purely the .NET framework itself, what is it going to run the application in production-like environment. I create a working directory within that image. And then I copy the build output from the previous stage. So if you look here, I have the build environment as my stage. So I say from build environment, take the release output and copy it into this new image. And finally, entry point is what should be the first DLL or the executable that should be triggered when the new version of this image is created. So let's go back to the command line and to the Docker one. <coughs> Let me show you some of the images that I have already. And uh, if you have Docker installed, you can run the same command. So I can say Docker images. So this will give me all the images that I have locally on my machine. <coughs> what is already downloaded from Docker Hub or the ones that I have created myself. And if you look at the Docker commands, so let's go back and say Docker Hub. There are various commands which are provided like top level. Uh, management commands and there are also specific commands for containers and images. So I used a top level command here, docker image or images. Same way I can use like uh, docker network or uh, docker system commands. Let's look at another command which is commonly used which is docker containers. So 
So when I run Docker container ls, I don't get any output. This is because I don't have any container running. So what's the main difference between a container and an image? Anybody who has used Docker can help to answer this. So basically the Docker image is a thing with a whole file that contains your application and it's the vendor system. Container is the running uh, of the whole image. It's like object in a class. Yeah, exactly. So image is just a template. It's like uh, the complete application containerized within a container or like a box. And then when you unpack it, when you run it, that's when you get a container. So uh, let's create a container. But before I create a container, I should use this uh, Docker file that I created just now and build that image. So let me go into the folder. So I'm at the top level. Let's go into that out spell. And here you can see that I have the Docker file. So I can run the docker build command. <coughs> I need to give a tag for this image. If I don't give a tag, uh, let's build one without any tag first. I say docker build and dot. Dot is the current context. So uh, you can see the steps that it's following. Whatever I described in the Docker file, it will execute those steps and it will create an image here. OK, uh, it failed. It failed because it could not restore the, there is no project solution. OK, I know. I'm looking for the directory, the project file as well. So I create .NET Restore, I copy everything inside. There. The current directory does not create a particular solution. have this mission file inside. Is it because you changed your work directory just now? I changed it to what is the current one. Okay, probably here. This should be tech box well. This should also be tech box Let's copy. Let's 
course. No, after work directly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can saw that uh, it 
took hardly like two or three seconds to start up the image and get the application up and running. Uh, if I want, I can again uh, rerun the same one and it would fail because there is already a container with the same name like V1. So I should delete this container before I can uh, restart the same one. So to delete the container, I can run command docker and then V1. So V1 is deleted and now if I run the same command again, it should start almost immediately. this I can run docker stop command so let's create a new terminal then docker stop even stop I can also find uh, various details about this image. So like uh, there is a command called docker inspect which gives us a lot of details about what is inside this particular image or the container. I can run the inspect command for uh, different things uh, that docker provides as the resources. So you can see on this container it gives uh, very detailed information about uh, what are the arguments, what is the path of the image, what is the status, the current status of this particular container, uh, which version of the image is used, what is the host path, name, and a uh, lot of other information. once again and I will make a small change and create another version of the application. So let's go to the views and let's say I don't like that carousel control. So I can go and just comment out the whole carousel. Let me go and create another version of the image here. So instead of V1, I will create V2 now. The V2 version of the image is created. Let's run this. Run. V2, let's export the same code. having this is now you can run both the images side by side. So I can go back here and I can start the version 1 of the image. So docker run, let's give the name P1 and just change the port because I can't use the same port here. So what I'm doing here is I'm mapping 8081 on my host through the AT port on the container. So container still exposes AT, but I'm mapping it to a different port. And now I have the application here. I can do local host, 8081. 
and this has the earlier version of the image, the one with the corrosive control. So you can imagine if you have like same environment and you want to test side by side uh, two different versions of the application, it can be quite easy to use Docker. It has a very little footprint and uh, it gives you that flexibility. You can really test these things fast. You don't have to wait for some other team to deploy your application. You don't have to wait for them to raise some ticket and go through the whole process. It is quite easy. So if I look at what is the size of the image, so usually I get this question when I do these kind of demos that, okay, what's the size of the images that you are producing? So let's say Docker image. Images. So look at the V1 and V2 versions of the image. It's like 258 MB. That small. And if you look at the base image, uh, the one that we use to produce this, it is Microsoft .NET runtime, this version, 255. 255 MB, that's the base image. And my application is like 3 MB of additional code. With two, less than 260 MB, I can run the application using this uh, Docker. Any questions so far? No? OK. So now let's build the second part, which is the Web API. So I'm running right now, Docker. I can do Docker PS to see what are the processes which are running. So there is one V2 version of the image running. Let's stop this. Stop V2. Uh, instead of using the name of the image, I can also use the container ID. I don't have to give this uh, cryptic name like 76 uh, F4. Uh, it has to be just a unique one. So if I give like 76 F, so this it should stop the image or the container. So I can use uh, both approaches, either give the container ID to stop or the name of the container. Uh, there is also a handy command. So if I go back again and say Docker images, uh, you will see that there are some orphan kind of images with uh, none in the repository name, none in the tag name. So these are like intermediate images which are created when the build happens and I don't really need them. So I can run a command, docker system clone, which will delete all the uh, stopped containers, all the networks which are not in use, all the dangling images, and anything that is not required. So in one command, I can delete like all those orphan images and orphan stuff which is like <coughs> Uh, you can also run individual like docker prune network, docker prune container, docker prune image specifically, but this is like one command which cleans the whole system. Uh, let's try to push this image to the uh, repository, docker hub. So for that, I will need to log in into uh, docker hub. Username is correct. So Login is successful and I can push, uh, let's push the V2 version of the image. So docker push, say Nilesh, okay. it talks well, V2. So if we go back to the docker hub, I should not have this image. Miss Amy. Yeah. 
first time when you are pushing the image, it might take some time. In days from the network speed, uh, it could be a bit slow. But if you have the image version already pushed to Docker Hub, it just pushes the delta, and you don't have to worry so much about subsequent push. So the push is fine, and if I refresh here, I should get the V2 version. Okay. 
Let's not give any version this time. So by default, what it would do is it would version it as latest. So if I don't specify V1, V2, or any number, uh, when it goes, it would put it as the uh, latest version. So I think the new let on it as well. returning two default values which is what we have here in the get request. So this is the uh, HTTP get that it's hitting the endpoint and it's returning these two values. Okay. So far so good or did I lose some of you guys? Okay. So let's move on to the third part, which is containerizing the uh, SQL Server database. So for this, I will use uh, the SQL Server image provided by Microsoft. So <coughs> this is SQL Server uh, Linux uh, version. So for this, I'm not uh, going to uh, create an image. It's already the image that is provided by Microsoft itself. I'm going to reuse it so I don't have to build anything inside this image. So let's create this. And <coughs> so what I'm doing here is I'm straight away uh, running a Docker run command and then passing uh, three environment variables or two rather here, accept end user license agreement as yes, uh, SA password, June 2018, and then which is the port that I want to expose, the default SQL port, 1433. I'm naming the container as SQL1, and then uh, I'm using uh, SQL Server Linux 2017 latest image. I will come to uh, the dash D flag in a while. So this is up and running now. So SQL Server is running. How can we verify this? Mm -hmm. I will use the SQL Operation Studio, which is again a cross-platform tool for database connectivity. I have the connection set up. So here you can see I am connected to the SQL Server 2017 now, running inside the container. 
and it has the default system databases. <coughs> English? Yes. You didn't mount the volume? No, not in this version. Okay. Uh, we will talk about volume in the next session. But it, when you run the image, is it possible image, it does a built in database created without the volume? So it it's will creating inside the container. Inside the container? Yeah. So it will disappear if you. Yeah. Okay, so let's run the database creation command here. I have a small script which creates the database. So there is nothing fancy about this. It checks if the database exists. It creates a database called TechTalksDB and then it creates uh, three static tables. One is the categories, categories of talk, uh, uh, paid conference, pre conference, like that. Uh, what is the level of the talk? And it also populates like, uh, three default talks here. So let's run this. So it's the same, the way you work with the normal SQL Server, here it's running inside the container. So uh, this is one way, there is another way where you can also connect to it using the uh, SQL command line tools. So I have a blog written about this. You can read <coughs> my blog and there is a couple of uh, blog entries specifically for SQL Server 2017, how you can use it with your application, how you can customize it. So there I'm talking about not running a script like this, but running the script as part of the container startup itself. So when the container starts, it will have this script executed and you will have the database up and running. So let's go back and talk a bit about the detached flag, the hyphen D option here. So what this does is it's running the container in the background. If you give D, uh, you will just see the ID of the container coming out. You don't have uh, interactivity with this container. So if you want to interact with this container, you can use docker exec command to go and uh, create like a shell inside this running container. So I can give the name, SQL1, and what is the command that I want to run? So it's the bash command. So I'm inside the container now, and I can run the normal uh, commands here, like ls or lsrt. So this is running all these commands inside the container and not on my host. I can come out by exit, so it will bring me back to the uh, host, and I can still see that the container is running. So Docker PS, that's one option, or Docker container ls. So it should give me the same output. So if you want to start a container in the interactive mode, that also is possible. Uh, you just change from minus D to here, IT, to run it in the interactive mode. So what would happen is the container would start and you would get a terminal inside the container and you are directly into the container. You can run the command without doing this exact stuff. Is there a batch file that's going to run? 
I ran a database initialization file. That is the other one. Oh, it's bash. So many of them. This one is the item. It's the terminal of Mac. No, That's where it's like it's I didn't see you type it. Oh, this is because it has a history. So if I ran this command in the past, it maintains a history so of like. So many lines. Can we save into a bash file? You can. You could put this whole command into a bash file, and yes, you yeah. can execute yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Yes, so like a shell script. You can do sh, and then the yeah, name of the extension. Doctor. For running this command from a bash file, it would be dot sh. On Mac and on DOS, it would be like dot bat. Oh, also, no, you know, doctor run and then uh, the file name dot. No, that option is not available. I will show you in the next one where you can get away from this using the Docker Compose file. But for now, for the beginners, let's do it this way so that you understand what are the commands which are being executed. Yes. So question, how do we configure the network in part into Docker? For example, like I want to have snapping or basically, you know, address configure. I'm not a network guy, so I may not be the best person to answer this, but what I know is, Docker has like uh, four different types of network. One is the host network, there is one bridge, there is uh, overlay, and there is another one. Remember? Uh, so basically, these are the four different types of network it uh, allows you to create. So if you use host, it will use the host networking. If you use a bridge, it creates like a bridge between, let's say there are four uh, different nodes where you are creating a cluster. So it would basically create a bridge between those four. Uh, overlay, I don't remember exactly, but it's something similar. So when you are in cluster mode, you either use overlay or the bridge network. So there are like uh, three or four different ways uh, in which you can handle networking in Docker. Okay. Then another question is like, what's the advantage or what's the use case of having a, a database in a container? For speed, how many times do you wait for your infrastructure guys to create you a machine, install the database and give you access to that? But how much time does it take you if you're starting a new project and you need a SQL Server database? That depends on your database size, but if your database size grows, yes. do you think it's a good idea to have it in a container? No. Uh, database within a container right now is even not recommended by Microsoft. So if you look at the container use case, it's mainly for development purpose to accelerate your development. You can use it mainly for your testing to speed up, to get that agility into your uh, workflow of your development, but I would not recommend putting it in junctions. So another thing that you can consider are persistence now storages. So Docker you can have a persistent mode in your image so that it, it can store the data. We will talk about position volume in probably five, four or five uh, uh, part of this series. Okay. Uh, any other question? If not, let's go back to the presentation and see. We have. So this is what we saw, uh, Docker multi-stage build uh, using the uh, stages, like the build stage and then we have the release stage. Uh, we saw how to build the image, we saw how to run the image, how to push it to Docker Hub. Then uh, this is typically the workflow which comes into picture. Uh, this is called the inner group development workflow. So we code the application, then we write the Docker file, we create the images. Uh, we didn't get to the fourth part, which is Docker Compose. You will see this in the next session. Uh, then we run the uh, Compose. So this is basically when you have a complete set of services and you want to run them together. Otherwise, uh, you can do the same using individual Docker run commands. Uh, then you test, and once you are okay with all this, you push these changes to the repository. So this is typically the workflow which is used uh, in a containerized uh, environment. 
here are some of the references. So the demo code is, uh, I pushed part of it, and the remaining ones I'll push to GitHub right away. Uh, if you don't want to install Docker, but you just want to play around, uh, if you don't have, let's say, privileges on your laptop, uh, if you are at office and let's say you're not allowed to install Docker, you can still do a very basic set of commands online. There is this Docker Playground. Uh, then to get started, this is the docs provided by Docker itself. Uh, there is a lot of uh, things that we can customize with multi-stage build, so I've given the link for multi-stage build. Uh, then the differences between the images, the link which I showed you, when to use which kind of image. And then there are some cheat sheets. So whatever commands I showed you, they are basically available as uh, downloadable PDF files or uh, GitHub gist. And uh, there is 12-factor app I put here because uh, this is one of the best practice when you are building microservices or container native applications to follow the principles of 12-factor app. Uh, one of the principles of 12-factor app is you should uh, write the logs to the console. And that's one of the things we will follow in these subsequent uh, sessions. So these are some useful links which I found uh, good when I was doing this product and I hope it helps you. There is one thing which I can show which I forgot to show again with Docker. So when you run the containers, uh, I can see the logs of the containers. So if I do Docker container ls, there is still the SQL server running so I can go and look at the logs of this SQL. So, Docker logs and I give the name of the image. And you can see all the logs that are produced within this container. You can even tail these logs if you want. So this is again one of the useful uh, feature which comes into the picture when you start debugging. Where is the log stored? This is inside the container at the moment. So we haven't come out of the container anywhere. Whatever I've shown today is all running inside the containers. Uh, in the later part, we will see how we can store things outside of the container and how we can share stuff between your host and the container. So that's all for the day. Thank you very much. Yes. If you can hold that question for part 5, I will show you live. Uh, but basically what you can do is uh, .NET Core has this application insights uh, compatibility. So you install or you download a package, you reference a package, and then you can produce telemetries from your application, which is available for outside consumers. So it's an application specific package. That's a way where application produces telemetry. There are other ways where externally you can monitor the containers and the application doing that. I mean, there are a lot of applications. I mean, if you want to invite in a server interest that, I mean, if you want to invite in a app, you want to go over like inside the application. Yes. Like the workers, the process, the page, or what's going on, the TV, or whatever. Yes. That kind of thing. Have that in the process. The OMS audit. Uh, operation management solution. Sweet. Yeah, OMS. <laughs> That has a container native solution. So we can use that. So uh, a small request. If you could fill the feedback form, it's just five questions. Three are mandatory, two are optional. It won't take more than two minutes. It would help me as well as the organizers to improve stuff in the future. Thank you. If you have any other questions, I'm Please use the meetup forum to ask questions or anything. So yes. they should be able to. I will publish the code on GitHub. The uh, presentation will be again available on slide deck. I will put the link as well as on uh, meetup.
Thank you. Thanks for coming. Hope you got some information. Very useful. Very close. Very close. Hey, hold on, hold on. Bring me one scan. Okay. Need to give a good review. <laughs> So maybe before you go clean up the cups, if you are, if you brought in the cups. <laughs> Thank you.